Welcome back to Forex Focus, brought to you by IG. We've got an exciting day across markets stemming from this inflation data release that brought us the lowest core inflation reading since 2021. Some interesting price action resulting from that, uh, raising rate cut odds as yields on treasuries lowered uh, across the curve, US dollar prices down as well, stocks ripping higher, S&P through 5,300, um, as well as some price action in gold uh, bouncing back and other major asset classes. But let's get into the numbers. Uh, we saw core CPI inflation drop to 3.6% year over year, and this is down 0.2% from last month's reading. Um, and this is as expected, um, but it did give us the lowest we've seen this core inflation measure since 2021. We have this zoomed out uh, view of the fight against inflation these past several years now. And if you see to the right of that graph, we, we have kind of stalled out near that 4% handle, um, dropping, staying where we were, dropping slightly more. Um, and so this downward trajectory is a positive sign for investors, even though um, all forecasts were expecting this number um, to not surprise higher, is still uh, a win for markets as they're interpreting it. Um, and the headline inflation was down year over year to 3.4%, also as expected. Um, but one of the numbers that uh, took the headlines and took a lot of attention was this month over month headline inflation rate. We saw soften to 0.3%. Uh, that was expected to be 0.4%, uh, staying where it was uh, over the past two months prior, but we did see a reduction lower. So a lot of attention uh, diverted to this metric as a, a positive signal um, for that lowering inflation uh, across markets. Um, and one of those markets being uh, interest rates. So we saw treasury yields drop here you're looking at the 10-year yield um, on the 10-year treasury note uh, drop to a one-month low, uh, starting pre-market above 4.4%, dropping at times uh, a whole 10 basis points lower. Um, I think the initial move um, and where we've kind of settled is around eight to nine basis points lower. Um, but you're really seeing a fall from the highs we saw in April and the end of May. Uh, as we've seen kind of some back and forth up and down, but now definitely looking at where we were at 4.7%, uh, a steady drop lower to 4.5%, and now maybe we can settle even lower as attention turns more positively towards rate cuts. I mean, starting the year uh, before this, this graph, but even seeing that number in the beginning of March near 4.1% in the 10 year. Um, we started the year all the way below 4% in this 10 year, uh, and we've just had to keep pushing back rate cuts and, and pushing back expectations as US data like GDP and employment metrics have continued to outperform. But now we're finally seeing some cooling in employment. We're finally seeing some positive progress in inflation uh, that hopefully is here to stay. And that is playing out uh, more short term in this uh, overnight interest rate market. Uh, these are the, the interest rates that the Fed controls, uh, the one that everyone is, is looking towards, Fed Chair Jerome Powell saying, hey, when are you going to cut rates that are at this uh, very high historically five and a quarter to five and a half percent overnight rate? We've, we've expected this to have been lower by now. Um, but like I said earlier, all this positive data has pushed out these rate cuts. But now off of this number and numbers we've seen earlier in the month, we've gained some confidence at least from the CME futures we're seeing here. Probabilities uh, higher now of two 25 basis point cuts by that December meeting, targeting a likely first date of the September FOMC meeting for the first uh, rate cut, um, but somewhere between September, 
November and the December meeting expecting two rate cuts of 25 basis points, uh, that being the highest probability here on this graph, but still a lot of variability as we've seen these probabilities shift uh, tremendously over the last few months. Um, so still an outsized chance of more rate cuts, um, even a chance of four rate cuts by um, December, but then again also a 6% chance of no rate cuts by December. Uh, you'd say that's unlikely, but we've seen that 6% come from 0% at the start of the year, so really who knows, but it, it's nice to see some more confidence uh, in these rate cuts coming as we approach the summer and this June meeting. Uh, and lastly, wanted to rope in the U.S. dollar story uh, subsequently with interest rates and, and speculation of interest rates falling from the Fed. We're seeing a U.S. dollar depreciation as uh, traders uh, speculate. Uh, when this yield will come down for holding U.S. dollar, um, and we've seen some key price levels hit today, uh, looking particularly at that U.S. dollar Japanese yen pair down almost 150 pips today or almost 1% um, below that 155 level. Uh, that's still historically very high, um, but a, a huge move today alone um, in that pair. And we're also seeing some monthly highs uh, approaching for some of these European countries like uh, the euro and the British pound, euro approaching 109 after being under 108 just a couple days ago. Um, and similarly, the uh, British pound approaching 127 after being down closer to 125 uh, just last week. So some pretty big, big moves today in the Forex market uh, and moves across asset classes as CPI comes in at expectations, but lowering positively, markets interpreting it positively, um, and a lot of price action as traders and investors look towards those future rate cuts. Thanks for watching.